What's up fam? We're here in another episode of The Community Kitchen and today we have the most amazing plant-based chef, Perla, with Elevation Eating. She's an amazing caterer who brings a brand new view of how to eat food with conscious consumption, how to prepare it, and how to share it. Today, she's going to show you step-by-step -step how to create a beautiful grazing board like this. Be prepared for mind-blowing flavor. Yes. Plant-inspired. Mind perception bending on the power of your food choices. All the things. Of all the things. Yeah, there's a I, lot of things. I mean, I, we can say a lot of things. I couldn't yeah, have said yeah. better myself. <laughs> I was super blessed to meet Perla on a retreat we did with our friend Sucha and Live Bliss out in Utah, Moab, Utah. It was incredible. It was so incredible. Life changing. I learned so much from being her sous chef and from being her friend over the last couple of months. It's such an honor to have her on the show today. Perla, can you tell us a little bit about what you're going to show us in the next 20 minutes? Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, one, thank you for having me. You're seriously like a dream to work with. I couldn't have done that crazy retreat without you and your support. <laughs> um, so basically, you brought me in here to inspire people around plant-inspired eating. So what we're gonna do in the next uh, couple minutes of the video, I'm actually gonna walk you through my three secrets to building a beautiful plant-inspired grazing spread. Cool. Yeah. I'm excited. Let's do it. Let's do this. Yeah. Hey, today I'm here to inspire you to eat with more intention so that you realize the power your food choices have on a personal and a planetary level. We're also gonna learn how to build a beautiful grazing board. I know that's why you clicked on this video. But being intentional about what you eat is a revolutionary act. So we're gonna weave that into today's little tutorial. So if whether it's you wanting to nourish yourself and build a beautiful snack platter for yourself, or it's you wanting to build something beautiful for those you love for the holidays, or a special occasion, I'm gonna walk you through my process of building a beautiful plant-inspired grazing board. So short introduction, I'm Perla, I'm a plant-based chef. I believe that food is medicine and that every bite we take is an opportunity to nourish ourselves. This belief is the foundation for my catering business, Elevation Eating, based in San Diego, California. All right, let's get started. So what is a grazing board? Basically, it's a charcuterie board without the meat. I focus on vegetarian and vegan cuisine. So when I'm building a board, I'm thinking to highlight the fruits and the vegetables, the high quality produce. So what I'm gonna do today, walk you through my three secrets to building an incredible show-stopping grazing board. Number one, very important, go for quality. Number two, eat the rainbow. I always say count colors, not calories. Number three, snack mindfully. It's probably my favorite one, and we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But let's start with number one, going for quality. So, quality. Check out these raspberries. So, these guys, I literally chose them because of their vibrancy. They look beautiful. Follow your intuition when you're choosing your ingredients. Same thing with the tomatoes. Vibrant, beautiful, full of life. That's quality. Make sure, if you can, taste your ingredients. Really just follow your personal preferences. Quality is so important. And the ripple effect from those choices go out beyond your comprehension. All right, number one was go for quality. Number two, eat the rainbow. Think count colors, not calories. So whenever I'm compiling ingredients to build a grazing board, I think Roy G. Biv, the rainbow, right? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, Roy G. Biv. I'm literally at the farmer's market or whatever market I'm at thinking in my mind, okay, red, strawberries, raspberries, orange, tomatoes, oranges, carrots, yellow, and so on. So think about representing all the different colors 
on the board because eating a variety of colors actually means you're eating a variety of nutrients. So let's put some color on this board. Okay, so we're gonna dive in to the actual build of the board. So when I start with a blank canvas, what I'm thinking is what are my bigger items? Often it's the cheese, whether that be a vegetarian cheese or a um, plant-based cheese, like a cashew cheese or other nut-based cheese. Right now for the cheese, I'm going to be putting mozzarella on the board with a little bit of tomato and a little bit of basil and balsamic vinaigrette, yum. So red. I knocked it off my list, right? Tomatoes are red, or they can be. So let's get some tomatoes, some mozzarella, and basil on this thing. So let's start putting some things on the board. Let's start with a little bit of caprese. So I'm gonna put some tomatoes, some mozzarella, and some basil. Let me get the basil. So back to my point real quick with gopher quality. Another item from the farmer's market, literally, the smell is amazing. When you're building a board, it's about activating the senses, right? Not just for yourself, but the people who are gonna experience that board. So these smells, you wanna think variety, you wanna think what textures can I put in this, crunchy, creamy, what flavors, sweet, savory, bitter even, um, sour. So a lot of things that you can potentially highlight on this board. Right now, we're gonna be doing the tomato, the caprese, so tomato, mozzarella, basil. Let's get this guy over here. So just a couple of these. It's gonna take up a bit of space, which is why I'm putting this first. You wanna get your big items on the board and then kinda of just fill in with some other ones. Like I said, I like to highlight the actual produce. Um, the cheese for me is just accompanying. They're the, how would you say, the co-host of the show? Not the star. Right now, these tomatoes and this basil, that's where it's at. Doesn't have to be perfect. All right. So really guys, have fun. This does not have to be perfect. Even if you're shooting it for a video, you're okay. You can mess up. You can do whatever. No one's gonna even notice because it's gonna be fucking delicious. All right, so like I said, when you're starting with the board, you wanna put your bigger items on the board first. Um, usually that's the cheeses. Right now I'm just gonna do the caprese and I'm really gonna highlight a lot of the produce that I got from the farm. So the cheese is set. I also have sauces and things I will adorn this board with last. So let's keep adding layers to this. I'm gonna put some crudités, which is just a fancy word for raw vegetables. So we have some yellow carrots. When it comes to vegetables and things that you're cutting for the board, think of uh, having fun with the cuts. Different cuts means different textures. So these carrots, I kind of just cut like carrot sticks. Um, I have some rainbow radishes. I just cut into circles. I have some fruit that I'll be showing you some different cuts too. So really just have fun with it. This board is about variety, like I said. So variety of cuts, variety of textures, variety of flavors. So for me, when I'm building a board, nothing's really planned. It kind of just goes with the flow. When you're choosing different ingredients, what pairs well together and whatnot, really, I want you to just think of what your food preferences are and think that you want everything represented. So think of something salty that you like. For this board, we have a couple different things. So we have some Marcona almonds. We have some crackers. So let's keep eating the rainbow. Let's get some other colors up on this board. All right, so we got a little bit of red with the tomato. We're gonna do some pears. I want you to, um, Remember what I said about the cuts? Feel free to cut things differently. It makes it more interesting. Also, look at this guy. So this pair I cut horizontally. This one vertically. It adds a nice little touch and dimension. We'll just leave him like that. 
Um, as you can see, I'm kind of just putting it everywhere right now. When I start putting in the accoutrements, I'm going to start placing things uh, close to each other that pair well together. So let's keep putting things on this board. Uh, variety, again, is key. So we got some reds on here. Let's bust that orange out. We have a persimmon. Again, I also cut this guy horizontally. I'm sorry, vertically. Eating seasonally is also really important. I always think about that when I'm building boards because when you're eating seasonally, the nutrient quality is so much better. So what I like to do with fruit, when you cut it horizontally like this, you can actually set it on the board and fan it out. It gives a really good visual. So let's put these glamorous raspberries on the board. Again, so basically, there's, it's basically like beautiful chaos for me. Um, that's kind of my style. So when you're putting things, you can think to work in odd numbers. If I had a bigger board or table, I would be putting maybe like five of each thing, maybe three throughout the board. I want to spread the color out on the board. So making it again, visually appealing. So feel free to just have fun with it and feel free to put things wherever you want to put them. Also, when you're building a board, pay attention to um, making things bite size. You don't usually want to put a big ass piece of something that's going to not be easily consumed. So think bite size. So pretty much all these cuts are just a bite or two. Um, this pomegranate's kind of a big chunk, but if you notice with the pomegranates, I just kind of cut them open and segmented them so that it's kind of an easy thing that someone can grab and put on their plate for whatever party it is. Right now, I have a bunch of different colors, pretty much almost all the colors represented from the rainbow. And now what I'm gonna do is fill in different crackers, nuts, dried fruits, um, and garnishes, things that pair well with these different fruits and veggies. But let's do the crackers here with that sweet. So we're gonna need them in a couple different areas. Again, I like to put things throughout the board. So I'll put some crackers here because they pair well with that fig jam. I'm actually gonna put these crackers over here as well because they're gonna pair well with this dried fruit. I'm gonna put some more dried fruit on the board too. So these are dates. Um, you do wanna be careful with dates because they have a huge pit on the inside. So let's make sure we take those out. That's another thing with boards. You want everything to be totally edible. The only exception I make is sometimes with olives. If they're not pitted, it's not always the end of the world because most people know that there's a huge pit in the olive. Um, but for the most part, you want everything ready to rock and roll. Try not to put things that are not edible on your boards. People will eat them. It's not good. So dates, crackers, jams. What else do we have here? So this is Parmesan cheese. Um, oh, it smells really good. So basically, I'm gonna make room on this board. Remember what I said in the beginning, I usually start with the cheeses and work around it. Um, so let's put this guy, honestly, this will probably go really well with the pears and the berries. So I try to also put things next to each other that pair well together, right? So let's put that right there. I have, um, some other salty things that I wanna put in here. We're gonna get a little bit of saltiness and umami from the par vegan Parmesan. Also that umami kind of uh, full flavor, savory flavor from the mozzarella. We're gonna get the salty from these pickles, these cornichons, olives, crackers. Um, so let me start filling in some things. Like I said, just kind of go with what feels right. For me, I wanna put a lot on this board, so I'm kind of allowing these bowls to kind of just set, sit outside of the, of the board. If you had a larger one, of course, you could put, these would constitute maybe some of the bigger items that you can work around the board. So right now we're gonna leave them out. I have this baguette that I'm going to put actually by the caprese because if you've never had mozzarella and basil on tom with tomatoes, on bread, I mean, you have to try it. So th that will go really well together. So let's put that right there. Awesome. What else do we have? We have 
something really exciting. So for every board, I want you to also think one, at least one thing that is a wow factor, something that probably most of the people at your party haven't tried. So for me today, this is Lotus chips. Um, it's actually my first time ever trying Lotus chips. They're delicious. They're basically a healthy potato chip. Lotus root is, you can find it at the Asian markets. It's a starchy vegetable. You can do a lot of things with it. You can pickle them. Obviously you can fry them. So they're delicious. And this will give a really delightful crunch. So I'm gonna put these guys here. Also, if you kind of just like look at it, look how beautiful that is. That is nature's beauty right there. I mean, amongst all the things, but this is just so unique. This is gonna be something that people are gonna look at and be like, what the fuck is that? So then they'll try it and then they'll probably really like it. And if they don't like it, that's okay because there's a lot of other things that will probably satisfy their taste buds. So today we're putting the Lotus crackers on the board. I actually think they'd be fun to eat with the pears, even maybe the raspberries. I also want you to actually, a little tip, notice that if you look at this pear, you can actually see a little bit of browning happening on the pear. That's called oxidation. So once you cut things and put them on the board, there are some things you wanna cut last so that they're visually appealing. Apples and pears are some things that you wanna kinda cut last because the longer they sit on this board, the more they're gonna brown. Try to cut everything before you even put it on the board. That way you can have a setup like me. They call it in, Fran in the French term mise en place, where you actually have all the different elements already ready to go and then you actually use those elements to build the board versus cutting and then adding, cutting and then adding. It just flows a lot better. So we got the lotus chips on here. Remember, I like to spread things out in more than one location on the board. So we could put these guys. Let's actually, I wonder, I bet they would taste really good with this vegan cheese. So let me stick those guys right there. For me, I did not count, but I mean, they look about the same amount so like I said, you kind of want to keep things fairly consistent. Five here, five there, eight here, eight there. Try to keep it consistent. All right, so I'm going to start adding some different sauces and some different garnishes. So here I have an artichoke tomato, kind of like a, something you might put on bruschetta. That's gonna go really well with the crackers and the baguette. Again, if I had a bigger board, I'd put this actually on the board, but I really like how things are overflowing off the main board, and then you have these beautiful bowls of extra um, goodness around the board. Uh, I do see some white space. Personally, I don't want any white space in this area. So I'm gonna start layering in a couple different garnishes. So for me, garnishes are also incredibly important. I really think that beauty activates the senses. This is already so beautiful and looking so abundant, but what can we do to elevate that? We can put some edible flowers. This, if this doesn't activate your sense of awe and beauty, I don't know what will. So this is a marigold, they're edible. I can either cut and place the whole flower or I can take some petals and sprinkle them over the board. I'm probably gonna do both. So let me grab some scissors. Just place a couple in these white spaces. So this is gonna draw the eye in. I wanna put it to maybe some contrasting, I wanna put it next to some contrasting colors. So this purple, I think it would look really nice right here. Look at the bounty and abundance just spilling off the board. Um, awesome, so let's continue to fill in with a couple things. So let's do a couple more of these because I actually only have it in this area. So let me, actually I have a few over here. So let's put a couple more here just to fill out. I'm gonna put a couple more here. You can also put nuts. That's often I'll use nuts or more dried fruit to fill in those gaps. So I have dates right here. I think I'm gonna add some more dates in that area and probably right here too. So I wanna encourage you to try new things. So marigold flower petals might be something new for you. They have a peppery taste, but not overpowering. They're actually really pleasant. I love using them in salads. Um, you can, I've even made a tincture with them. They're actually very medicinal. 
um, along with calendula. Both those are they're some of my favorite edible flowers. Marigolds, calendula, and chamomile are some of my favorite flowers to put on the board. So let's get some of these petals and just sprinkle them on. Often with the cheese, I will top it with maybe some red peppercorns to contrast with that white. Um, you could do honeycomb if you're not vegan. I love honeycomb. And then you just wanna kinda sprinkle it around, try to keep it consistent. I will use my garnishes, like I said, to fill in the holes and the gaps. That red and that yellow contrast is really nice. It'll look nice on the orange as well. I'm gonna add a little bit more color to this and then we're gonna go to my third secret. So before we talk about that, let me add a little bit more color. I'm gonna be honest with you. This, the sauces are key. So raw veggies, um, fruits, they're already packed with so much flavor, but when you put a sauce on that shit, it elevates it to a whole nother level. So this is my fan favorite basil vinaigrette. It's actually simple to do at home. Um, you get a little bit of basil, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of white wine vinegar, a little bit of chili flakes, salt, black pepper, blend it up, and you get this magical sauce. Look at that color. Okay, cool. So I love put. this literally tastes good on anything. It could be a salad dressing. It could be a, just a classic dip. I'm gonna drizzle this sauce over my crudités, uh, which is the raw vegetables, right? So right now on this board, I have the carrots right here. And I also have the radishes. I often will put cucumbers on a board as well. This tastes really good with cucumbers. And it's okay if this sauce gets on other things because it's delicious and it will taste good on everything. So just a little, just a little drizzle there. Also really nice contrast with the yellow carrots. A little goes a long way. It's really flavor packed. So you don't wanna like have the veggies swimming in it, but you want enough where people feel satisfied with the sauciness. So I'm gonna put a little bit on these radishes. So radishes are really bitter. And not always, but often. Um, bitter is a very medicinal flavor. It's actually super underrated in the Western culture. So I try to add a little bit of bitterness to my boards too, um, and then add a little bit of sauce to kind of counter the bitterness. So that is really good. This is also a fan favorite. This is balsamic glaze, but I reduced it with some pomegranate juice. So this is a pomegranate, and I sweetened it with maple syrup. So this is actually a maple pomegranate balsamic glaze. It's incredible. Um, my favorite thing to put balsamic glaze on, there's so many things, but on my boards is the caprese. It tastes insane. Literally so good. So I'm just gonna drizzle a bit of that on the caprese salad over here. And look at that, again, against that white is just, this brown is really luscious. Again, a little goes a long way. And to be honest, this stuff tastes so good, I'm gonna drizzle it on other things too. So these tomatoes, I could put, I could have put the basil vinaigrette on it. I'm gonna put a little bit of the balsamic glaze since it's right next to it. And then I'm seeing, I'm gonna put actually a little bit of this over here too. Just put it on sauces, put it on whatever you want. The balsamic glaze actually also tastes pretty good on fruit, and I'm betting it will taste good on this vegan cheese. So let's maybe put a little bit of that too. You can get crazy with it. I mean, I could really just flail it like all over the board. All right, how's it looking? It's looking pretty good. Okay guys, you may think that this is done, but it's not because I forgot to add grapes. Um, I probably put grapes on every board just cause they really, I feel like they kind of just uh, create a more, I don't know, they just round everything out. So when I do grapes, I cut them in 
bite-sized little pieces so that people can just grab and not have to fuss around getting the grapes off of the stem. That's the same kind of thing I did with the pomegranates. So I'm just gonna put them throughout the board. This one's kind of, this one's looking good. Um, burp, just right there. It's okay that we're layering on top of things. It's just more layers of flavor. All right, and then I'm gonna add uh, just some things to make eating a little bit easier, right? So we're gonna do this beautiful spoon with the fig jam. We're gonna do another beautiful spoon with the artichoke bruschetta. Um, this guy can cut into this cheese like so. In fact, it's often a good idea to cut a little pieces um, in fact, let's do that, of the cheese to make it easier for people to grab. So that's good there. And then a little, little fork for these guys right here. All right, and I think it is complete. All right, so we finished our board. We talked about the importance of going for quality, eating the rainbow, and lastly, I wanna talk a little bit about snacking mindfully. This is honestly one of the most important parts. We put so much love and heart and soul into this board. We wanna take a second before we dive in and express a little bit of gratitude. Whether it's just nourishment for yourself or you prepared this for people you love. I said earlier how we are disconnected from our food. That second that you can take before you engage in actually eating this beautiful work of art helps to connect you with all the work and energy that went into this. Because it's not just you actually building this stuff, it's also the ingredients. How did the food get to the plate? Were the people paid fairly in the production of this? Were animals tortured or suffering in the case of using meats? Or we do have some cheese on the board. Um, were, there are so many different things to think about with where the food came from and all that it took to get the food to the plate. So taking a minute to express a little bit of gratitude, taking a step back before we dive in, really makes a big difference because your food choices really have power. They create a ripple effect. They go out into, of course, your own personal health, your family's health, the community's health, the health of our world, are the businesses that you're buying your food from or your ingredients from, are they, do they have sustainable business practices? Are they supporting our environment or are they degrading our environment? There's so much to think about. So next time before you sit down for a meal or before you dig into an incredible board that you just made, just take a second, express a little gratitude. It goes a long way. So I'll leave you with that. So eat well, be inspired, and let's support a healthier world. Cheesy. <laughs>